Yay! Thank you guys for being here for the second video of this wonderful tutorial of the real, honest and trustable tutorial. And uh, in this video I will show you, and it will be magical, I will show you how to go in advanced mode and make your stuff running well in RetroArch uh, directly. So basically we will see how to download course how to set up, I would say, the advanced options of RetroArch to set up everything to make the backend run smoothly and very easily on your home theater PC or your PC directly if you want to play on your PC. It's, uh, it's exactly the same setup. So um, I have an Xbox One controller, so I will uh, configure it, I will show you how to configure it, it's super simple because it's like X input on Windows 10, so it will be like doing your grocery or uh, I don't know, I don't have an example, but it will be super 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 simple. So let's start. Okay, I fixed my stuff, uh, I think we are good to go. Let me grab my Xbox One controller. So I've got my Xbox One controller here, but you can use a Xbox 360. Um, I, I would say it's it's working with the X, X input anyway, so it's it's not an issue, you know. So um, what I will do here, it's uh, I will say it's quite simple. Um, I will turn on my Xbox One controller here, so it's already paired, no, it's not paired, so uh, I am turning on my, yeah, it's already paired, because, oh no, no, anyway, anyway, so I'm, I turned on my, my Xbox One controller and I press the little button here to put it in pairing mode, okay, following that I will just go in my Bluetooth setup, Show Bluetooth devices. I will I like a Bluetooth or other Bluetooth, and normally it will appear right here. It will show up here. Uh, ah, okay. I have to push, to push the button again. Are you saying I am a liar? Okay, what the heck is going on? What? Wow, okay. It doesn't show up, you know, so, okay. So it's when you have technical problem and that's why it's called real, honest and trustable tutorial, you know, because in everything you will find issues and uh, we're facing an issue right now, right? So. Okay, okay, let me try something else. I want to pair Xbox One controller to PC with Bluetooth. Ah. Okay, guys, honestly, I tried everything I can. It will be super, super, super simple. Super, super, super simple. I am doing this tutorial right now, okay? So I don't want to, to waste my time working on that and you waiting for my Xbox One controller to, to be paired. I am running into trouble because I don't know why but when I am pushing this button, sorry, but when I am pushing this button and this button here that is supposed to put the Xbox One controller into pair mode, I don't see anything appearing in my Bluetooth window. And uh, it's like, I, I don't understand why. Here I have my retro arc working and 
displaying correctly. I will use my keyboard for now. Uh, I know it sucks, but uh, just for this video, in the next video, my Xbox One controller will work. And uh, if I if I find the solution, I will give it to you. So here is like I am in RetroArch and I don't know what to do. Okay, just to explain you about something about RetroArch. Uh, the people who made this this wonderful piece of software did that because it was, uh, as I explained in the previous video, it was hell because every time you install a new emulator, you have to uh, to put your own controllers. Binding is not automatically done between your controller and your uh, emulator so you have to bind every buttons with the original uh, button on the uh, for the console you are using the emulator for for it was it was hell also at the same time you had to manage different emulators and it's hell because you have to go in each emulator update them and cross all your fingers that everything will run smoothly on your system because sometimes when you are updating something, it just crashed, it just fell, it's not loading as efficiently as before, and it could be hell to manage all that stuff. Um, first of all, in the main menu, uh, you have something called load core, and in load core, you will be able to manage your different core. What is a core? A core is uh, I will say a piece of software, okay, overrided to fit into a retro arc. So basically, you will find all the different emulators you need uh, for each consoles in a specific format, overrided to fit with retro arc. Uh, it's very efficient in the way that you won't have anything to do. To update all your emulators because RetroArch will handle that automatically. It will download all the cores and updates you need to to run your game smoothly. So you don't have to think about it. It's it's over. It's it's, it's the past. And you will thank me very much at the end of this tutorial because you won't have anything to do. Just push a button and everything is running. So I am going into into download the core so it's fetching the core list and now I have everything I want to play every games I want uh, I have like um, a core slash emulator for Amstrad CPC arcade arcade I, I I don't know if you know MAM but MAM is like um, it's a big database of uh, very old arcade games that you are not able to find anymore so it's very interesting to do that and you will have all the different cores for everything on this uh, wonderful list here. Okay, let's say I want to install an emulator slash core for the Nintendo uh, system. Okay, the, the SNES, Super Nintendo Entertainment System. It's the complete name. SNES. Um, I'm going here. So everything concerning Nintendo is like ordered uh, first by the Nintendo name dash something and here I can see I can see that I can run easily into trouble because RetroArch to be fair for every emulators is not choosing a specific emulator to run SNES games so it's giving you what you can find I will say on the market and here um, you have all the I will say the emulators that you can find on the market to run SNES game here it's it's an advantage because it's fair but at the same time it, you can run into trouble because you don't have any clue uh, when you are seeing this this big list you have like Famicom uh, inside uh, Beetle business business whatever you don't have any clue of what what you need to choose here so my advice here is to go into the internet to check if the emulator can fit your needs but my recommendation here is when you see Beetle because I know what is Beetle when you see Beetle choose Beetle so I will install Beetle business 
and what is Beetle business? Uh, basically, Beetle means Mednafen. I will show you what is Mednafen now. Okay, Mednafen here. Okay, here is Mednafen. So Mednafen is a portable utilizing OpenGL and SDL argument command line driven multi-system emulator. Menafen has the ability to remap hotkeys function, blah, 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 blah. So it's a wonderful emulator and before RetroArch I was already using it. Using it. And Menafen is able to run all the system here. So you will have a Beetle, basically a Beetle, it's the name that RetroArch is giving to Menafen. So you will have a Beetle for all this system in RetroArch. Usually this emulator is working very well so you won't have any issues with that okay now that the core is i will say here you can see at the bottom at the, the bottom left here left bottom here that you you don't have any core loaded okay if i am going into load core and i am selecting snes and i am validating it now you can see at the bottom that the main fn business is loaded so basically through RetroArch you are able to load a game but we won't do that we won't do that why because I don't want to launch my games one by one into RetroArch it's possible though but I don't want to do that I want to use my front end that will be launch box to launch my different games so launch box will call uh, RetroArch to load with a specific system, specific emulator, specific core, a game. And then RetroArch will pop, we'll be able to load the game with the core associated and also use the X input controller you have and map automatically the different button to bind everything automatically. The only thing I want to show you now. Um, now we have a, a, a core loaded there is to go into information here if you go on core information you have all the information concerning the core loaded here so you can see a bit of business it always made nothing Nintendo SNES Super Nintendo entertaining system manufacturer blah 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 in here uh, you have all the supported extensions SMC big BS ST and SFC it means that in your launch box, because launch box is able also to detect the different extension for a specific system, so it won't be an issue. Launch box would use these extensions here, here to pass to RetroArch and to play the game. Okay? And also, if you go on uh, system information here, you will have like different. Uh, different information like Vulkan support so you can you can see that you can use your backend renderer Vulkan with that you have OpenGL supported so it's all the thing that you can do with the core installed okay because depending on the core you don't have all this information usually Mendafin is really customable and is really uh, powerful and efficient so you won't have any uh, issues with that. Okay, in the next video, I will show you first how to configure your Xbox One controller. It would be super simple because I will figure out what happened there. And um, I will show you also the installation of Logbox to explain you a little bit the, the software. But I will say that despite the fact that um, the Xbox One controller is not there, the back end the back end itself is ready to run with our uh, beetle slash mednafen core so it was the purpose of this video um, the back end is done and now we will see uh, how to install the front end and to configure it to make it working well with the with the back end at the end of this tutorial you will be able to launch all your games your different games so you will be very happy and if you are happy I am happy
Thank you and see you on the next video.